Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you all for the presence here. Uh, I would like to, first of all, thank uh, our partners here in the podium, but a very special thank to Ambassador Honda King. Uh, she was the one that convinced us to bring this launch of the SOFI for the first time ever here to New York. We used to do it in October during, during the World Food Day. And we realized that the last years when you heard the speech of the heads of states and government, they usually refer to the numbers the year before. So this is an intention to try to update the figures to help update also the discussion about SDG number, particularly number one and two. We believe eradicate poverty and hunger are let's say, the fundamental of the others. If we don't achieve the first two goals, we will not be able to make progress in all other 17 SDGs. So this is why we are here. Uh, you uh, have a, a presentation uh, after by Mr. Torero that uh, had the team that prepared the, 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 this, uh, uh, this book. Huh? A lot of numbers here. Uh, difficult to digest, by the way. But uh, I will try to highlight just the two points that I believe are important and quite new. Uh, one is that for the first time ever also, we are presenting another indicator to approach the concept of food insecurity. Is the food insecurity experience scale, FIAS. That is one of the indicators of SDG number two. Uh, this uh, concept of food insecurity, uh, different from the, our traditional number is about hunger measured by what we call prevalence of un undernourished. This indicator, traditional of FAOs, we uh, release it since 2000. And it uh, gives an idea of the food per capita available in the country. If the food per capita does not reach the minimum requirements, we say that someone is hungry. Uh, this fears is a different concept. It asks the people, the families, the person, what they are afraid of in the future, not having food available. What are the main issues that they believe will make it difficult for them to eat three meals a day? And you see that the first time we released this indicator, the numbers are much bigger. About two million people in the world are afraid of not having enough food to eat in a daily basis. This is more or less two and a half times more, the big number also that we show here of uh, 820 million people unnourished. That is our traditional number. So for, unfortunately, for the third year consecutive year, we are showing a small increase or that the hunger numbers are stable around 820 million but people that feel insecure, insecure because they are in areas under conflict, insecure because they are in countries with high level of inflation, insecure because they are very low paid, that they, they will not have money to buy their food, this number reach two million uh, people around the world. It's really a big, big number. We were surprised when we found these figures. Another number that, uh, and this is my second point, that surprises us also, and you will not see it properly highlighted in my opinion, but uh, you can find if you look carefully on page 42 of this, the book, you see there a paragraph that says that total number of obese people in the world surpassed the total number of unnourished people from 2016. 
uh, is the first time that we can uh, give the numbers of obese people in the world. It's the first time that we managed to present the numbers in a series. It's very difficult, for example, to estimate obese people, children under five years, and make a difference between obese and uh, uh, overweight. Uh, but making this calculation, we realize now and make some simple projections that compared with the number that I just gave you, 820 million of nourished people, hungry people in the world, probably, most probably, we have 10 million more people obese. So we have about nowadays 830 million obese people in the world. And that is happens in almost all continents except Africa and Asia. But looking to the tendency, uh, we see that very soon, even in Africa and Asia, there will be more obese people than hunger people. So it's really a global epidemic issue, the way obesity is rising and how fast it is rising. Just to give uh, you an idea of the uh, growth rate, uh, in Africa, 6.3% a year. In Asia, 7.5% a year. In average, in the world, 4.8% a year. So very, very big numbers and growing very fast. What to do? This is the point. There is no uh, uh, broad consensus on what to do. So we present what uh, are the World Bank and FAO recommendation in a picture on page 39 that summarize the best practices that we see today that the governments are putting in place. I will summarize then in three or four most important measures. First one, labeling and better information about what we eat. Nowadays, we don't know what we eat most of the time. Second, uh, controlling or reducing or banning uh, uh, advertise of uh, some products for children. Uh, restricting advertise. Uh, third, reducing the levels of fat, salt, and sugar used in the products. And there we need a strong cooperation with private sector. And also promoting better accessibility to fresh food markets because to combat obesity, we need a lot of things, but most of all, to have uh, healthy food available. And healthy food, most of the times, mean fresh food. Fruits, vegetables, eggs, milk, that are available locally. And then I came in with my last point on this presentation. We are promoting the decade of nutrition. World Health Organization and FAO since 2014, we have been working on this and the General Assembly have endorsed it two years ago. And last year, uh, with IFAT, we are promoting the decade of family farming. It's important to combine those two, because on one side, we need to promote healthy food, and healthy foods are local food produced, and fresh food, basically. On the other side, promote family farm are those that produce most of this healthy food locally. So combining the two decades of nutrition and family farms is a good way forward to try to stop this 